Hey guys, how are you going? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create this pin login using plain HTML, CSS and JavaScript. There will be no libraries required to achieve this. So, um, basically, this right here is the final result. If I was to enter an incorrect pin, such as 4586 and press submit, we can see the login was unsuccessful and we get a bit of user feedback for that up here. If I was to make this uh, 1234, that is the correct pin, and then press submit, it logs in just fine. So, we're going to be creating this from scratch in this video, and it's going to work in uh, major browsers such as Chrome, Firefox, and of course Microsoft Edge. So, let's go inside this file right here. We're going to be uh, creating it inside this index.html file. So. Let's take a look at the directory structure. So inside the text editor, um, I've got here three files. We've got the index file. There is not much going on inside this file aside from the inclusion of the Google Material Icons library. It's simply just a CSS style sheet. So, so um, of course, we need to have icons for the backspace and the submit button. So I'll leave a link to this site in, this, in the description. You can just copy and paste this link inside your own HTML head tag. So, uh, back inside here, we've also got um, this dashboard HTML file, which just is going to be uh, redirected to upon successful login. And this just says, welcome, you're now logged in. So, pretty basic stuff going on inside this file. I've also got this login PHP file. This will do the validation on the pin code. So I'm, so I'm obviously going to be using PHP as my server-side language, but you can of course use whichever server-side language you like. So basically, it's just checking if the pin code was 1234. If that was the case, it's going to be a successful login, and it's going to return a response code of 200 OK. Otherwise, it's going to say, 401 unauthorized. So basically, you're going to need to return these response codes uh, on your own server-side language. Um, and basically, the JavaScript is going to check if the response code was 200. If that was the case, it's going to redirect to the dashboard page. Otherwise, it's going to redirect, sorry, it's going to just say, you know, obviously, login unsuccessful, and it's going to show the red text box and give user feedback for the incorrect pin entered. Okay, so uh, back inside the index HTML file, let's begin work by creating the HTML structure for the actual uh, pin pad. So we can begin here by creating the main container. So we can say here div with a class of pin dash login. Inside here, we're going to have two main parts. We are going to have um, the input up here, which contains, of course, the numbers once they've been entered. And secondly, we're going to have the container, which contains all of the keys on the bottom half. So, back inside the text editor, let's create the top section input. So, we can say here, input with a type of password. This ensures that the, obviously, um, the values are hidden. We're going to make this a read-only field. This ensures the user can't input their own keys inside the, um, the actual field and a class of pin dash login underscore underscore text. Um, so I'm going to be using the BEM block element modifier CSS naming convention, but you can name your classes whatever you like. I do have a video on BEM if you're interested. Okay, so we can then make the container for the, uh, for the keypad or the numpad. So we can say here a new div with a class of pin dash login underscore underscore numpad. And then we can put uh, 12 of those numbers. So um, just a quick heads up, we're going to be generating all of the actual keys, so all of the 12 keys with JavaScript, but just so we can actually see what's actually happening using CSS, we're going to put here 12 keys. So we can say here div with a class of pin dash login underscore underscore key and a value here of zero. We can copy this uh, 12 times, so we can just do this, this, and then this. And um, for every third key, we can add a line break. And this, of course, ensures 
we have four um, four rows with three columns for the actual pin. So as I said, all of this stuff will be generated eventually using JavaScript to ensure the HTML isn't too large. Okay, so I can save this and refresh, and we have this result right here. So let's add some CSS to make this look like this. But first, let's make use of the material icons for the backspace and the check mark. So back inside here, we can add a class of material dash icons to the third last um, uh, key and have a value inside here of backspace. So um, this is just the way that the material icons work. If you have a class of material dash icons on an element and then you have um, the name of the icon as the text content, it's going to render the actual icon. We can do the same thing for the last one. So we can say material dash icons and then inside here we can say done. So backspace and done are actual icon names as part of the material icons library. I've also got a video explaining how to use the Google material icons library if you're interested. So I can save this and refresh and we have now the two icons down here. So let's work on the CSS to make it look a bit nicer. So back inside here, uh, let's start by creating a new directory to contain both the CSS and the JavaScript for the pin login. So I can say here pin dash login. Let's make a new file. Let's call this one pin dash login dot CSS. And inside here, we can begin on the pin login main container. So we can say here pin dash login. Let's display this as a inline block. And this will mean that uh, essentially the contents within the actual container is going to determine the width of the container. Um, a border radius of 10px looks quite nice. Same goes for the padding. And I find a font size of 28 pixels works quite well for this. Um, we can add a background of that light purple. That'll be D, 9, D, E, double F. And for the border, I like to use a darker version of the background color at one pixel. So we can say 1px solid and then hash uh, 363b5e. Okay, so I can save this and refresh and we have this right here. Nothing. Let's go back inside the HTML file and actually include the CSS file. So we can say here, just simply of course, uh, pin login and then pin login.css. Try again, save this and refresh. We have this right here. Looking not bad so far. Okay, so, and we also don't want the user to be able to actually highlight and select any of these uh, keys. So let's go back inside here and add um, these four CSS properties right here. I'm going to copy and paste this and put it inside here. So um, these just ensure that across all browsers, the user can't actually highlight and select any text within the container. So I can save this and refresh once again and now I can't actually highlight any text. Okay, cool. Let's move on to the text field right here. So back inside here, let's target the pin login underscore underscore text class and here we are going to set a margin of 10 pixels auto, 10 pixels and then auto. This just means the top of 10px margin, uh, the right side auto, the bottom 10px and the left side auto. And basically these two autos combined with a display of block is going to center the actual uh, field. So uh, I'll just demonstrate by setting a width of let's just say 700 px on the actual container. So I can save this and refresh. We can see the field is now centered. Okay, so that's what the margin auto and the display block does right there. Okay, we can make this have a width of 50% just like that. A font size I find of 0.5 em is good. That's basically just 50% of this font size right here. We can set the text align to be centered, of course. A letter spacing of 0.2 em 
it just looks a bit nicer like that. Um, a background of RGBA 0.1.5. So, uh, so this basically just means a 15% uh, opaque black. And this basically means also it's going to be a darker shade of the background color up here. So that just means if you want to change the background color, you change it in fewer places such as these two up here. Okay. Um, a border of none to make it look a bit nicer, of course, once again. A border radius of 10px works, in my opinion. Um, an outline of none. This will remove uh, the blue little outline that you find when you actually select the actual input field. And a cursor of default to make it look like you can't actually edit the content within. So I can save this and refresh, and we have this right here. Not bad. Um, so we can now move on to the actual keys. Um, and I do point out that right now it looks quite small. Let me just see if I can figure that out. So um, I think I forgot to add padding. So yeah, that's right. So let's add padding here. So say padding at 10px. Save this and refresh. And that is now a bigger size, looks much better. So let's now move on to the actual keys themselves. So uh, inside here, actually, you know what? Sorry guys. We need to add a new class for when it was an incorrect login. So basically, we're going to add a class for the input field to uh, have the animation and also a red background color. So uh, back inside here, let's say uh, pin login text. We're going to be using a modifier class uh, with the dash dash error, just like that. A um, some uh, some text color of uh, 901818 so some some dark red text right there a background of a light red so hash ff3b3b3 okay so um, I can just add this class to the actual uh, field itself so we can do that right there and of course the actual JavaScript is going to be adding this class upon um, an unsuccessful login so for now, we can test it using the class right here. So I can save this and refresh. And we have this. So uh, for the animation, let's go back inside here and define some keyframes. So we can say here, keyframes, uh, login error. We can call it that right there. Um, we can make this 25. So um, at 25%, at it's going to move to the left a bit. So we can say transform and then translate x uh, minus 3 pixels just like that. And at 75% completion, we're going to translate it to be 3 pixels to the right. And then inside here, we can say animation name as being login error. Animation duration as being 0.1 seconds and animation iteration count to be 2. So basically, we want this animation to run twice, okay? So I can save this and refresh, and we get the animation right there. Um, also, to support Firefox, you have to add the keyframes. It has to be uh, moz keyframes just like that. So um, login error, just copy the same thing for the Firefox support. From what I understand, to this day, Firefox still doesn't actually support this syntax right here. You need to use the Moz keyframes for full Firefox support. So I can save this and refresh, same result right here. Okay, cool. So now we can finally move on to the keys. So uh, let's go back inside here and we can target the pin login underscore underscore key um, class. This will have a width of 60px, same goes for the height. Okay, just like that. A margin of 10 pixels uh, on all sides. A background of RGBA, once again using the same trick as above. A 15% opaque black. A color of 363B. Uh, 5e works well. I believe it is the same color as the uh, as the border right here. It's not. Well, it should be. Oh, no, it is. Yeah, there you go. So the same color as the border of the container. Um, a border radius of 50%. This will make it a circle. A display of inline flex. Okay, so having it inline means that the line breaks here 
are going to work just fine. So it's going to float to the left basically and of course create those, uh, those four rows. The reason for the flex is because we want to align the items to the center and justify the content to the center. These two basically just mean that the actual icons themselves um, are going to be centered horizontally and vertically. A font weight of bold works just fine and a cursor of pointer also works fine. So I can save this and refresh and we have this right here looking pretty good. Okay, so uh, just for the actual feedback when pressing the buttons, we can go back inside here and we can say pin login key, active, so for the active uh, pseudo class, we can say background RGBA 25% opaque bla um, black. Save this, refresh, and we have here all of the CSS now complete for the pin login. So now we can move on to the JavaScript. But first, let's just remove the pin login text class from the actual input field. So for the JavaScript, the first thing to do is to define a class which represents um, an instance of the pin login. And then we can actually construct all of this HTML, all of this repetitive HTML inside the JavaScript. So let's just uh, essentially, uh, let's just keep to an example of the number and the icon. And we can also comment these out. So now we can generate all of these in the JS. So inside the directory, make a new file for pin login.js and then you're going to of course want to uh, include it down here. So script source, we can say uh, pin login dash pin login.js. All right. Inside here, uh, let's define uh, the main class for an instance of pin login. So we can say class pin login right here. And basically the way it's going to work is we're going to pass into the constructor of this class a bunch of options. So we're going to pass in the actual container itself as an element. We're going to pass in the login endpoint, so login.php. We're going to pass in uh, dashboard.html and we're going to pass in the maximum amount of numbers you can enter as a pin. All right, so let's go here and we can say constructor. We're going to use a bit of object destructuring here. We're going to say L uh, login endpoints redirect to and then max numbers equal to infinity by default. Okay, so I'm going to show you how this object destructuring works now if you're not aware. So basically um, inside the index HTML file to actually uh, call this class, we're going to say down here um, new pin login just like this and here we're going to pass in an object. All right, so we're going to define all of these four options right here inside this object. So we're going to say L is equal to the container. So for this, we're going to say document dot uh, gets element by ID. I'm going to pass in here. Uh, let's just say main pin login. And of course, an ID of main pin login needs to exist on this element. Okay. Um, for the um, for the login endpoint, this will be equal to, of course, uh, login.php. So login.php, just like that. For the redirect to, this will be dashboard.html. So you can see here that this is this is quite reusable, and of course, you just change what you actually pass in to change the behavior of the pin login. Now, for the um, for the max numbers. We can pass in here max numbers and say four. This ensures the user can't enter more than four numbers inside the actual pin login number pad. Okay, so this is all of the um, the properties defined. Um, so back inside here, the way that object destructuring works with this little brace on each side, it just means that all of these properties are going to be accessible directly, just like this. Okay, as opposed to uh, doing something like this and then saying uh, obs.l etc. Um, using the destructuring you're simply just saying um, this and then saying l. 
So anyway, let's uh, uh, finish the constructor by firstly just getting a reference to a few elements. So we're going to say this dot L is equal to an object, and this object right here is going to contain all of the elements that uh, that we need. So for example, we're going to say main is equal to L. So main is going to be the L passed into here, and that's going to be of course the container for the actual pin login. We're going to have one for the numpad. Okay, this will be L dot query selector. I'm going to pass in here pin login underscore underscore numpad just like that, and of course it's going to be numpad right here. We're going to use this to of course generate and then append to the numpad container for each key. Um, for the text display, this guy right here, we can say text display equal to uh, L dot query selector pass in here dot pin uh, login underscore underscore text. All right, cool. So now we can simply just set a few more instance variables. We can say this dot login endpoint is equal to login endpoint just like that. We can say this dot redirect to equal to redirect to. We can say this dot max numbers is equal to max numbers. And finally, we can say this dot value is equal to nothing. So this value is going to be the current value that is going to be sent to the login PHP script. And of course, this will change as the user inputs their numbers. So this is all done. Uh, the first thing to do right now is to generate all of these 12 keys right here. So we can go back inside here and we can say this dot underscore generate pad. So we're going to define this method right here. I'm using an underscore to signify it is a private method. So down here we can say uh, generate pad and we can implement this function right here. So it's going to be pretty straightforward. We're going to first just define the actual layout. So we can say here const pad layout equal to um, an array. And here we can define each one of the keys. So I can say here one, two, uh, three, and do the same thing for, of course, four, five, six. So four, five, six. So just defining the actual layer. Um, and then, of course, seven, eight, nine. And then for the last row, it's going to be backspace zero, and then done. Okay. So essentially the text content of the elements is going to be each one of these right here. All right. So down here, we can loop through each one of these uh, keys. So we can say pad layer dot for each. So for each key right here, we are going to firstly figure out if we need to add a line break after the actual key. So we can say here um, const insert break. This will be a boolean value equal to key dot search. So this is basically just going to uh, accept a, reg uh, a uh, regular expression. So we're going to say here uh, three, six, or nine. So we're saying if this key is a three, a six, or a nine, we can say not equal to one. So basically, the key dot search method is going to return negative one if it can't find three, six, or nine. If it can find 3, 6, or 9, then of course this will then be true. So true or false right here, whether or not we need to include a line break after this key. Okay? We can then actually create the element for the key. So we can say const key l equal to document.create element. I'm going to pass in here, of course, a div. So make a new div. Alright? And then we can add a few classes, so we can say key l dot class list dot add. We're going to, of course, add the pin login key class. So copy this, paste it inside here. Okay, and then we can say key l dot class list once again dot toggle material icons. So basically, of course, only for the backspace and the done keys do we need to have the material icons class. So we're going to pass in here as a second argument, um, essentially forcing true or false to actually add the material icons class. So 
we're going to say is nan and pass in the key. So basically, if this key is not a number, then we're going to include or force the material icons class on the actual key elements. Alrighty? Cool. Of course, this isn't a number and these are numbers, and that's why that works. Alright? Cool. So we can then say key l dot text content is equal to key, and then we can say key l dot uh, add event listener. Um, on the click event, we are going to fire off this handler right here. And when it gets pressed on, we are going to say this dot handle key press and pass in key l dot text content. You know what? We can just pass in key. So essentially, we're going to define a function called handle key press, which will take in a key, one of these things right here. And then, of course, this function is going to handle all of this stuff for the user input. So we'll define this function up next. So anyway, we can go down here and we can say this dot l dot numpad dot append child. We're going to add um, this key to the numpad. So we can say key l right there. And then down here, we can say if we need to insert a line break, then we're going to say this dot l dot numpad and we're going to append the line break right here. Append child document dot create element. We're going to make a new br line break tag right here. Okay, cool. So that is now done. So um, I can save this and refresh and we can see our progress. So refresh the browser and we have here all of that right there. Um, the backspace key isn't working. Let's go back inside here and figure out why. Of course, backspace. All right, save this refresh once again and all of the keys are working just fine. If I was to press on the key, we see here handle key press is not a function. So let's go ahead and now actually create this function right here and get it working. So back inside here, let's make a function for handle key press this will take in the key of course so one of these characters up here um, and basically we're going to switch on the key so we're going to say switch key we're going to say if this key was backspace then we're going to say this dot value is equal to this dot value dot substring zero this dot value dot length uh, minus one so, this is just simply removing the last character from the current value of the, um, of the pin login, okay? We can then break, and that's of course implementing the functionality of the backspace. We can say if it was actually a done key, so if the done key was pressed, we can say this dot attempt login, and of course the attempt login function is going to handle all of the logging in stuff. We can then simply break like that. In the case it was one of the actual numbers um, themselves, we can just say default and we can say if this.value.length is less than this.max numbers and this is actually a number key, then we can actually add a number. So essentially we're saying if we haven't actually reached the maximum um, amount of characters yet and also this key is actually a number, then we can say this dot value plus equals key. This right here isn't too necessary, but it's just a bit of a um, a bit of a safety in case we choose to add like a number, like for example uh, D or C. For example, we don't want C appearing inside the actual input, so it's just a just in case. This right here. Anyway, um, of course, we're then just appending to the current value for the key itself. Okay, so I can break right here and then down here we can call a new function called this.updateValueText. Alright, so backspace, remove one character, done, actually log in, make the request to this file. For a number, just append to the value. And then down here, this method is going to actually update the little text box with the dots for each character inside the value. All right, so let's go ahead and actually implement this function first. So down here, we can say 
uh, update value text and here for now let's just console.log this.value okay so I can save this and refresh we can then see our progress with this method or function so I can save this refresh here and then press on number two we can see we get two in the console uh, three five six etc so it works just fine if I was to make this a new character we see nothing actually gets added because we've reached the maximum of four we specified right here. If I was to remove this, we default to infinity. So basically, we can enter as much as we want. Of course, backspace works. And if I was to press on the done button, we get this attempt login is not a function. So anyway, uh, let's go back inside here and, and finish implementing the, uh, the update value text method. All right. So, uh, it's going to be pretty easy. Basically, it's going to say this dot l dot text display dot value is equal to. Now, we don't really need to have the value inside the text field, so we could just simply say, well, sorry, we could simply say this dot value like that. Save this and refresh, and now of course the value is going to be inserted uh, directly inside the value here. So we can see it doesn't get shown. However, of course, if someone was to say, for example, do this query selector and then something like this, and then they say dot value, they could actually see, you know, your number. Um, so uh, to actually protect against that, um, we can actually just say something like underscore dot repeat this dot value dot length. So basically, just showing underscores instead of the actual um, value. And that's just to hide the actual value itself. And the repeat method is gonna repeat this character for this amount of times, the length of the value itself. Okay, if I can save this and refresh, and now we get this working just fine. And now, of course, this no longer works. All right, so that is all for now for the update value text method we can now work on the attempt login method. So down here, let's say attempt login. This one is going to fire off the request to this file. So essentially, we're going to first check if this.value.length, if we actually have a value inside here, so something is actually entered, it's more than zero characters long, then we can fire off the fetch request. We're going to make a request to this.login endpoint, okay? Um, and here, we're going to say the method will be a post method. For the headers, we're going to send this as, um, we're going to send this with a content type of application slash um, x www dash form dash url encoded um, that is the standard uh, content type when sending through uh, html forms so uh, we use that one right there and then uh, having this content type we've got to send through the body as being pin code equals and then this dot value so basically of course the body uh, needs to match up with the content type. So this content type right here looks like this. The key equals the value. All right. Um, I've also got a video on sending post values with the fetch API if you're interested. Um, and then once the response comes back from that, um, we can grab the response. And for now, I'm going to console.log response.status. All right, so uh, basically, of course, we're going to go to the endpoint login.php. We're going to send through here the pin code, and then we're going to log out the response status, either 400, oh, sorry, 401 or 200, based on the pin code. Okay, so I can save this and refresh, and now we can enter in some values such as uh, 2145, press submit. We can see here we get 401. If I was to make this uh, one, two, three, four, and press submit, we now get 200. Inside the network tab, we can see it all working. We have these two requests right here. The first one sent through pin code 2145. The second one sent through pin code of 1234. 
Okay, so there is one last thing to do, I believe, and that is to handle the redirection and then, of course, the actual um, login failed error message sort of validation thing. Okay, so back inside here, inside the then from the promise, we can say if response.status is equal to 200, if the login was successful, we're going to say window.location.href is equal to this.redirect2 back up to the object that we passed in right here. In this case, it's going to be dashboard.html. Okay, so we're going to redirect to that file right there. If it was a unsuccessful uh, pin code or incorrect pin, we can say display. We're going to add the class to display the animation and the red background. So class list.add, we're going to add pin dash login underscore underscore text dash dash error. All right, and of course, it's going to fire off all of this stuff inside here. Okay, and also along with that, we need to just remove it when we input a new value. So inside here, what we can do is we can just say, after we update the text, we can just say remove the class here if it exists. And this will of course remove the red validation uh, sort of um, styling when they change the, um, uh, the actual pin code after the response came back. Okay, so I can save this and refresh and we have our finished product. I can refresh here, enter in our 1458, press submit, we get this right here, it doesn't work. We can enter in one, two, three, four, press submit, and it works just fine. And that is how you can create this pin login using plain HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you later.